You guys doing good? Go to Psalms 1 with me. We're going to, uh, we're going to talk about really communing with the Lord, growing in a God reality. Wouldn't that be fun? Get to know God more where He doesn't feel far away or seem far away. Where actually by faith you begin to pursue Him. And, and He begins to get more real and more real. So you don't live out of the thoughts of your mind. Or the feelings of your emotions. But the reality of your heart. It's so never said with the mind a man believes, with the heart a man believes. Come on, it's a big deal. We've lived from our heads our whole lives. And our feelings. And our emotions. True? True. And in Christianity, you live from the truth of the Word of God. Period. It's that adamant. Period. You get it? Till things get reconstructed, revamped, things just come alive. All of a sudden, you cha- it changes. You, you're changed. Communing with the Lord is a beautiful thing. It's probably not. We're probably told we should spend time with God, but a lot of times people don't even know what that really looks like. Or it just kind of... And some people might know, and it might feel like a a refresher course this morning. If so, that's great. The gospel doesn't ever get old. It's never about a fresh word. It's always fresh. Amen? I could just stand up here and tell you how much God loves you every day, and we'd do well. (laughs) Well, we'd do well if we believe it. Amen? So we're going to talk about communion with God. Uh, When I first got saved, went to church a lot through my life. Who went to church a long time in this room that... You went a long time and it was just the right thing to do, but God really wasn't close to your heart. He was kind of out there somewhere. Who has that experience in their lives? There's a lot of folks like that. I find that there's a lot of folks still like that in their lives. They're still looking for that God reality. So I want to talk about communion with the Lord because when I got saved, the Spirit of God... Now, now, okay... I share my testimony when we got saved. It, was, it, was, it seemed very sovereign. It was, obviously, it was full of grace. It was a divine experience. It was. But there was a response on my part when I got saved. And, and, and the main part that I see was a surrender of myself. Like God brought me to a place where I had this option, opportunity, privilege to die. To not want to live from my heart, in my heart. To not want to live the life that I was looking at that was called me right now. The motives of my heart, just the mess. I saw it for what it was. It wasn't a pretty picture. And in my heart I was like, I don't ever want to live that again. And I took that want to this way in a heart cry. That's prayer. But I'm so serious that I don't want that. It wasn't the language it wasn't, well, I don't want to live for me. Yes, I do. <laughs> it was, I don't want that. Okay? One thing that you can find in communion with God when you start to pursue Him, your heart will get fine-tuned. I know people that didn't have the experience I had where they didn't really, they kind of see themselves as they go and things pop up and then they start letting things go. Okay? But I promise you, if you'll start doing what we're going to talk about today, and I don't know if it'll go into tomorrow or what, but that process will happen. <laughs> okay? I don't believe you're in the school because you're not sincere. All, that, all that's required is sincerity of heart. It's not works that saves you, right? It's grace through faith. But sincerity of heart is a big deal. The pure in heart see God. Every one of you is the steward of your heart. You're the one that determines what you do from within. Are you following me with this? And as truth comes to our life, and even if we hear it as truth and have other desires, we have the privilege to begin to align ourselves to truth. It can feel like works, in a sense, if you're just trying to do what you know is right, but you want to do something else. I'm not talking about that, and today you'll see. I'm talking about relationship with God. Taking the truth this way and allowing the truth to get bigger in your heart than these desires till they dissipate and truce your reality. Where you're not biting your lip to live a Christian life, it becomes who you are. And you just wake up and your heart's constrained by Him, compelled by Him, whatever words you want to use. Are you following what I'm saying? And and this is the beauty of communing with the Lord and becoming one with Him that way. Now, I got 
I, I really do believe one reason that I shot up and grew fast and people were asking if I was a pastor. I was only several weeks old in the Lord. It was funny. We were still joined at a public pool and that year because we used to take the kids there. They were little and, and, uh, and I got saved in the early summer. So we were already members, paid for a membership. So I would take the kids over to the pool. My wife and I were kind of on different tracks at that point. And so I was just over there with the kids. But I would get a crowd around me at my towel. It just would happen. It, just, it was crazy how it happened. I'm just a couple of weeks old in the Lord. But I was excited and things would change. And people would ask me. Some people would say crazy stuff like, Man, what's going on with you? You just seem so different. And I'm like, really? What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know. You're smiling a lot. You just seem different. You look, I see, well, I had lost 45 pounds in a matter of six, seven weeks. You, I see you've lost a lot of weight. You got yourself trimmed down. And, and, but you just, you just seem different. You look like you feel so good about yourself. And, da, da, da. and people were saying stuff like that. And I'd say, well, let me tell you. Well, then I would start pouring out my heart. Well, they would talk at the pool. They would talk to each other. Next thing you know, there's questions. And I'm just a couple of weeks old, the Lord, and I would be getting questions like, what about this? And it was amazing how it seemed like I could answer. <laughs> but I was speeding on the Word. I mean, I'm laying there on the towel. The kids are playing, and I'm reading my Bible. And just, God. And, and, uh, but just in a matter of weeks, I had a crowd around me at the pool. Side. Now, I believe a lot of that was because on June 9th, when I got saved, there was a grace and an understanding of my life. I saw it so clear. I literally died. Who, know, who knows who Catherine Coleman was? You know, and she used to say, I can take you to the place where Catherine Coleman died. She used to make that comment. And I remember that. That sticks with me. I just remember that because I've watched a couple of takes. Of, well, I could do the same thing and I understand the importance of that. That's cool. Now, if you can't necessarily do that, there is a place for dying, whether it's... A, you know, now, I know along the way we get fine-tuned and groomed by God. I'm talking about those surrender. I just, God, I'm yours. Yeah. Man, grow me, mature me, lead me, guide me. I'm yours. Let all that's in you be in me. I give you who I am. I would talk like that all the time to the Lord. So, and we'll get into this today. But, but that was one of the reasons that I know that I grew so fast because I, I just, I gave him... Everything to work with is what I'm saying. There wasn't a stumbling block. There wasn't a, well, I want you, but. Well, I want all of you except. It wasn't any awareness like that in my life. I wasn't holding on to any rights. I wasn't holding on to anything. I just said, my life is yours. You all follow me? That's a big deal. You can do that when you get alone with him. Along the way, I remember God showing me things. And, 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 and I remember laying on my, uh, my uh, uh, well, it, it, I, I laid down and I said, Lord, I just, I just don't want anything to hinder knowing you, hinder the expression of who you are in my life, da, da, da. I just give myself to you. I know there's a way for you to just come into me even more and express yourself in more reality. I was seeking that. And I said, if there's any ways I think, if there's any ways you search me, you know, and bring it to my attention. But God, I just love you. I'm pursuing you. So I wouldn't introspect my life in a negative view. It was always upbeat and positive. You love me. You're doing an amazing work in my life. My life is yours. Now I found along the way, if what I was saying wasn't the whole truth, God would illuminate a little thing. Or That day on the chair, I don't even share these two things because of the condemnation factor possible. He shared two little things the way I thought. And when he spoke them to me, I realized they were limiting. But if, if he'd have spoken them to me two months before, I'd have thought, well, what's wrong with that? It's just a way of thinking, you know. And if you share some of that stuff premature, that was a, something I grew into. That was a year after I was saved. See, there's, there's just a, there is a sanctifying. There is a growing up into Him in all things. There's a, and, and it's like that mindset was there and He never exposed it until I got to this certain point to where I could really hear it and see it for what it was. Then it wasn't a struggle. It wasn't a condemning factor. It, wasn't, it was right on time. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, it didn't stop the grace of God because the whole time my heart's pure and there was an ignorance there. It wasn't willfulness. It was just a way that seemed right to a man. It was just something. It was just natural knowledge. And it was just... Isn't that amazing? So, so the Lord, I'm laying out on some chairs, flat, talking to Him like that, and I just began to worship Him, and these two little thought patterns rose up in my heart. And it was God answering my prayer. And it's just awesome, because as soon as you see it, when you're in that place of surrender, you go, duh, 
Well, Lord, I thank you. That is, no, oh, I don't reserve the right to that. I don't even want to thank you for showing me. And then all of a sudden I saw how Scripture changes the way we think. And then I apply that in prayer. You see what I mean? And that's how you change. So let's get into something here. I'm just laying a little groundwork of just the joy of growing in Him. I believe Holy Spirit wants to lead us into fellowship with God. He literally led me into my bedroom. That was where I went. He led me into my bedroom when I got saved and began to teach me communion with the Lord. I didn't have Christian relationships. I didn't have strong fellowship in a church. I just went to work and got saved. I hadn't gone to church for years. So I didn't have spiritual father. I didn't have mentors. I had the Bible. I had Holy Ghost and I had a pure heart, a heart that's been changed. That's all I had. That was so more than enough. (laughs) So I wasn't limited. Amen. In fact, it's like he had me. Do you get what I'm saying? He had me. So he can work with that. So surrender and yieldedness is a big deal. Let's read this. We're going to talk about communion with God. Okay. Bless Psalms 1. You there? I was tempted to go to John 17 quick, but... We're going to read Psalms 1 since we're here. I'm not going to mess with you. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. It's amazing. In his law he meditates day and night. That doesn't mean he's sitting in a chair reading the Bible 24 (laughs) 7 because you can't do that probably (laughs) see sometimes we get we don't realize how rigid we get with stuff we say well I can't spend time with the Lord you're with the Lord he's with you so just one little mentality I can't spend time with the Lord I have a lot of people say well with my work schedule my life and my family I just don't have any time with the Lord and I'm like well he's in you He's in you. So he's already with you. (laughs) You you don't have to go meet him. You don't have to drive across town. I'm not being cynical. I'm I'm trying to make this so you don't ever think that way if you were thinking that way. You're with him. He's with you. Yeah, but you don't understand. I this and this and this. And I'm thinking, no, that's a mindset that's telling you why you can't be what your heart's crying out to be. See what I'm saying? Come on, you can be like super busy with your life and schedule for seasons and he's right here. He's, he becomes, he's a relationship. He becomes your mindset, the way you think and, and live. All of a sudden everything's just, everything's realigned through him. So even no matter how busy you are, you can't even think in a way that's stressful, frustrating, Anything because you're looking through truth. That's the whole goal of communion and fellowship where two become one. Where you're actually looking through his eyes and, and, and living through his wisdom. You follow what I mean? But if you start saying stuff like, well, I can't, I don't have time to spend with the Lord. You have a wrong concept. You're thinking of making an appointment with God and he doesn't fit into your current busy schedule. <laughs> We're not making appointments with the Lord. We're walking with him. Amen. So to meditate day and night in, in, in the Lord, meditate, there's an outward utterance, there's a muttering, there's a musing, meditation, it's not, you know, it's not something to be afraid of. <laughs> meditation is like, is, is just pondering, continually mindful, going over and over again within, even uttering outward. Now you can do that, you can do that over scripture, you can do that and be Impersonal, you can do that and be personal. If it has to do with the word, it, it, it's all good in the long run. But I like to do it and be personal. I like to talk to the Lord. I, I don't talk about Scripture in my heart. I talk to the Lord. I'm not a big confession sheet guy. I'm just not. I've been around confession sheets and confession sheet mentalities. And, and, and people's ability to quote the word takes the place of knowing God. And if their confession isn't coming to pass, there's all kinds of craziness, insecurity, condemnation, works. I'm not a big confession sheet guy. As much as the word's anointed and the word's powerful, I am not a fan. I'm personally not a fan. I'm not telling you there's anything that, that, that you can't get out of it. 
I'm personally not a fan of just taking the scripture, walking the floor, and reading what it says. I take what it says and commune it with God. I feel like it puffs us up in knowledge and it gets us to think that to quote the word is to know the word and because we quoted it, something has to happen. And I see a lot of disappointment and hurt in the church and I see a lot of people confused and troubled and they say, well, I did this for six months and I quoted the scripture every day. Why haven't I seen the breakthrough? Well, you probably haven't even received the love of God and been sure He's with you and for you. You're just getting into works and you're using a principle to get a result and it's very impersonal. I'm just not. And uh, because I don't see it draw us closer to the knowledge of God. We know what His Word says. But sometimes knowing what His Word says can be your stumbling block because it's not your experience. It's not your reality. And now you're frustrated. There's this inner frustration. And then all you're seeking from then on is motivated by the frustration instead of His love. You're not even drawn to Him. Am I making sense? Or is this too challenging for you? <laughs> Who knows? You hold fast the confession of your faith and all that good stuff. I understand where we get the concept from. What that means is you don't let your heart shift and turn and you let the words of your mouth continue to come out of the belief of your heart and don't let anything have that. It doesn't mean turn it into a robotic performance of quotation. Like I don't even read my Bible to memorize it. I read it to know Him. These little motives mean everything. You can't rise above what motivates you. We pursue knowledge and knowledge can puff you up and you think to know is to grow. No, to know Him is to be transformed. That's why there's people frustrated out there and, and they have so much knowledge. They've read so many books. They've got so much in here that, that actually it becomes a detriment because there's so much crisscrossing around that they can't even hear because all these other things have a voice now. And we've spent so much time filling ourselves with all this stuff instead of just being with Him. And I just don't want that in my life. Are you guys okay? Okay. So we want to meditate day and night. What I want to interpret that into to, in my own heart and encourage you to, to, to embrace this. And you don't have to grab everything I say, but just listen to my heart. That, that meditate day and night. I want, I want, what I want for me is I want that to be a continual consciousness of God, His Word, His ways, His nature. I want to grow up into Him to where 24-7 I'm thinking through Him. That's how I take that to mean. It doesn't mean I have to read my Bible all day, every day. But I'm thinking on His wavelength. Uh -huh. <laughs> that changes everything right there. <laughs> his wavelength is mine. Okay? I'm taking my time here. Don't, 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 don't get impatient with me. This, might, this is the most exciting topic to me. Righteous consciousness we spent two weeks on and the being free from sin is for the purpose that your father, son, father, daughter, that you walk together in the cool of the day. The whole purpose is to reestablish you back to the beginning to where you're in communion with God. Communion, union. There's such a deep word of intimacy in, in communion and in co-union and communion with the Lord. I mean, it's intertwined. It's, it's literally, you can find the word intercourse there. You can, it's, 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 I'm in you and you're in me. Come on, that's like, and it's a spiritual thing. It's not a weird and flaky thing. It's like, whoa. So I want that. Boy, that sure beats just having a head knowledge of God. I, I want to lay on my bed and be able to commune with Him and know, have a knowing in my heart where His Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I'm His child. Oh, because see, then all those counterproductive thoughts, the way that seems right to man, the little negativities, the little things that try to etch away and demean and, and chip away at your identity have no voice now. You don't even hear them anymore. It gets to a point where if you would hear them, it would be like, whatever, oh my goodness, you're kidding, right? <laughs> so why speak? <laughs> Seriously, it stills the voice of the lie. Because you know that you know that you know. Now, the reason I've seen a lot of people live their Christian life like this is because of this thing we're talking about not being established and Satan's still taking cheap shots and they're still believing things that, are, that should be Unbelievable. You follow me? See, we're believing things that should be unbelievable. 
<laughs> and the things that we should believe, we think are unbelievable. <laughs> See how twisted it gets? <laughs> the things that are created to be normal, we fight with and think are, are unbelievable and too good to be true. You see how the perversion works? And the things that are, should be unbelievable about our lives are the things we struggle with and believe. It's, it's called the fall of man and God's getting us out of that. So we're going to meditate in His Word. Why His Word? Because His Word is truth. And truth makes you free. We're not looking. Thank God for manifestations of the Spirit. Thank God for certain things He does. I, I am so not against that. I am so not against the work. That would be ridiculous to be against that. And the ministrations of the Spirit. But God, thank you for the truth that makes me free. Here's what Matthew 8 says. It says, somewhere around 32, somewhere around there. It says, uh, if you continue in my word, you're my disciple indeed. You will know the truth. It's a deeper word than just knowledge. You will know the truth. You experientially understand your heart comes alive. Your heart's quick and you'll know from inside. You'll know the truth. And the truth, what? The truth make you free. It's the lights coming on. It's you being alone with God. You're reading your word. And we're going to get into this today. And, 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 and all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. What a joy. When you're all alone, nobody's around and you're reading and you just start to commune with God a little and pray. And, and you go, oh, God, you really love me. See, that's a good day for you. Yeah. When you really love me. You absolutely, where it's not just the Christian thing to say, where you're not just chugging along in the confession sheet, you love me, or he loves me, he loves me. That's one reason I'm not big on confession sheets, because it's impersonal. You could be walking in a room with the Lord, talking about him instead of talking to him. And I don't understand that. I don't understand walking saying I'm the head and not the tail and not just communing with God and thanking Him. He's lifted me up out of the darkness and He's put me in the kingdom of the Son of His love and thank you for the power of your Spirit in me and communing with God rather than quoting a truth. Yes. Is it the truth? Yes, but I want it mine. You know? So, <laughs> let, me just, let me just keep reading this for, for right now. But His delight is in the law of the Lord and His law, He meditates day and night. Well, that's because it's the truth. So we're going to continue in, not how we feel, not what's tearing us down, not what seems so apparently true that's opposite of the word. But yeah, but brother, but look at this, but how come, but why? Oh, you know what we do? And we look at face value evidence that's against truth and we talk ourselves out of what this book says because of either how we feel, what's happening, and how we're defining that. You can't give that thing power. That's natural knowledge, it's human wisdom, and it eats our lunch all the time if we're not careful. It's the way that seems right to a man. Yeah, but, Jenny, do you have something? Yeah, can I, uh, I need a mic, I don't know if BJ's around or... Okay, I'll just repeat it. Uh huh. Okay, good. She's saying uh, a, a definition, especially concerning music, meditation means put it into practice. I like that. It's a, it's a, there, 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 there's a musing, a meditating, a pondering over again. It's just, hmm. So it's not just reading your Bible to get the chapter in. It's not a devotion time. You're not saying, whoa, read Matthew 7. Praise God, I can go to work now. Hey, did you read your Bible? Oh, I read my Bible today, Matthew 7. <laughs> We're not trying to accomplish that. <laughs> There's times that there's times that days go by where and this has happened for years where I don't read a whole lot of the Bible. God's speaking something to me through something that might be four sentences. And I'm just hung up there. I can't go anywhere else because it's becoming alive in me. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why Holy Spirit, years ago, you've probably heard this, He told me to read, this was a long time ago, this is like 14, 15 years ago, He said, read Philippians 2 and don't read anywhere else till I tell you. And I said, okay. 13 weeks later, I'm reading Philippians 2. I don't know that I can quote it. I didn't read it to quote it. He told me, I want you to stay there, because I said, okay, that's awesome. 
I said, man, I, I just want to know. I mean, if you can even tell me, I'll just do it. I'll do it because it's you. I know it was God. I said, why? Why? He said, because I don't want you to know Philippians 2. I want you to become Philippians 2. He said, and I don't need you reading anywhere else until you become Philippians 2. Become what it says. And then go somewhere else. And I went. And he was teaching me a concept very early on that I was reading the Word to become the Word. I wasn't reading the Word to know the Word so that I could intellectually, with knowledge, debate in the Christian circles and have the answer and be able to talk theology and fit in in a circle and maybe even be an edge ahead because I have so much Bible knowledge. Blech. I'm not even thinking that. That is like the Because you're, there's pride in that, there's a false esteem in that, and there's a wrong understanding in that. It doesn't help anybody. That's where people can... They'll just sit and just contest their Bible knowledge and talk principles and try to correct and adjust. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that, brother. It actually means... And da, da, da. And it's like, okay, well, how has that transformed your life? How are you enjoying more peace today because of what you're pushing as an agenda right now? You have to be very careful what moves you and motivates you. How are you knowing Him more because of this thing that you have a need to... Make so clear. Because I've watched countless Christians do that. They get a topic in their heart and they feel like they have revelation and it becomes the, the thing they push. And they get in these meetings and, and they start, they get to leaders. I'm telling you, people come up as a guest speaker. They come to you and they, they want to tell you what the Lord's teaching them. But when, when they tell you, it, it's, it's got a, a real strong cant to it. They're drawing attention. There's a, you can't believe how many conversations I have with people on the side. <laughs> Listen, man, I said, can we talk? I pull people aside. Man, you know, you, you guys see me spend a lot of time with folks when I'm around. There, you'd be amazed the content of some of those conversations. It's not all just, oh, well, praise the Lord. Oh, I love you too. Because if I start perceiving and hearing and how the words of the mouth, things are being exposed, and all of a sudden they say something that gives away, man, I've got to address that if I love people. And I'll say, listen, man, you know, I've had so many of these conversations. Listen, you pulled me out, you know, you had a need to share this, and, and it looks like you're excited, and, and I'm glad you're excited. But I said, let me caution you in this. Let me, because when I heard you say this and this, and, this, and I've had some people get a little razzled by that, and like, well, well, no, but they get defensive. I've had some people just cry, because when you say it, they realize they're insecure, and they're trying to get you to see value in them through your Bible knowledge, their Bible knowledge. I see value in you because Christ died. Not because, you have, not because you can share that with me. You're, you're, you're letting that determine your value. Your value is in Christ, man. I love you. You wouldn't have to share any of that with me. Your life is amazing. Da, da, da. You'd be amazed how it'll unhinge people. It'll expose that lie. It'll get them to drop that thing and let it die. And they'll just start building on first things first. But you can perceive that stuff. And the, and the clearer you walk in love and if your motive is pure, it's amazing how God will give you those opportunities. See what I mean? If you have your own issues and your own little weaknesses and your own little wrong motives, you'll never have a voice in that stuff. It's the reason that we're teaching this stuff so that we can walk cleaner and live more effective. And Come on, Jesus could say anything to anybody and you wouldn't have to think twice about it. Right? Because it's just going to be right. <laughs> Not in the sense of... Right in elect it's going to be right from the heart. It's 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 got to be good. I don't know about you, but I pray about that stuff. Jesus, if I'm following you, then do such a work in my heart. Turn my heart in such a way where my motives are as clean as yours are. Where my heart is in agreement with you. When I talk to somebody, I have no need to correct them. I have no need to be right. But let me see love and be love and express love just like you. I want to be like you. If I'm the body of Christ and I'm representing you on the earth in the embodiment of you, then you've got to manifest this love to me, your wisdom and your will through my heart. God, thank you. And I'll slip to my knees when you're not looking and say, thank you that you've made me one with you. Thank you that I can walk in your truth. That's communion. It's not self-conscious. It's not self-needing. It's not gimme, gimme, gimme. It's not bless me. It's not, hey, I'm afraid, help me. It's none of those kind of prayers. It's I want you more. Follow me? Heavy communion stuff, that kind of prayer is. When, you, when nobody's looking and you're alone and you're saying, Lord, I want my heart to look just like yours. 
I look at you in the Gospels and you walked in love in the face of all kinds of adversity and you maintained the purest of motive, the purest heart, heart, unoffendable, unchangeable. Men could never change who you are, but because you were so locked into love, you changed who men are. God, I want to walk in that strength. That's my calling. That's my created value. That's my life. Now, I have prayed stuff like that countless, countless times. And I believe that if we'll continue to just stay in that place, it reveals that that's what we really want. It's not just a passing prayer. It's not just doesn't sound good. It's not just affirming our own conscience for a season. There was a, there was a time I did that. I was praying to the Lord and I was saying all the right stuff. And he said, oh, Jan, that's not true. You're not serious at all. I said, <laughs> and he called me on it and I collapsed on the floor and bawled because God's never wrong <laughs> and I just blew <laughs> it wasn't even daylight out I was up before the, the, the rooster crowed man and, and I was just I'm thinking this is God and I'm saying all this spiritual stuff and I was getting in a trap of just saying the language yeah. But I've spent hours asking God to keep my heart pure and thank you for leading me. And Holy Spirit, kick me in the butt if you have to because you love me, but keep me on the track. And I have more confidence in your ability to keep me than me being deceived. So I'm not going to hang out here introspecting and nitpicking my life. I'm going to grow in you. And along the way, if I need fathered, father me. But I ain't camping over here nitpicking. That's what a lot of us do. Man, as far as I know, today, my heart's pure. As far as I know, I mean well, and, and, and I'm in the Christ. And, and if He needs to adjust something and tweak something along the way, He can. But I'm running. You get it? I'm not sitting back, well, is that really well? I won't get very far. And that morning, I'm just doing this, and it started to get into, I heard some CDs, and there's this low, and I started to say the same things, and I started to pray this certain way. And then it became, it was, it was a couple weeks went by, I started praying this one prayer, it became my prayer. And it sounded so spiritual, I had to pray it, it just sounded so good. <laughs> and if you were peeking in and listening, you thought, oh, that Dan, he's just so spiritual. <laughs> And God's sitting there going, would you get a grip, son? <laughs> He's like, you, would you stop praying? You don't even mean that. You're just learning how to pray that. And I'm like, what? And he instantly shared. And I said, oh. You know, you want that relationship with the Lord. I'm sharing some of these as little, not, like teasers, if you will, in a healthy way. Uh, you know, to just the, the benefit of communing. Because if He doesn't intervene and speak that at that point, through what we've already built and established and I've already given Him permission to, where do I go from there if I don't hear His voice at that moment? Yeah. 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 You turn into religious, you could get... In, where does that end? Yeah. Where does that lead you? If he doesn't speak, we'll talk. In his law, he meditates. Now look at the benefit of becoming a product of truth, where your mind and your heart and your life is lined up to how God thinks and who God is. It's amazing. He shall be like a tree. <laughs> Do you hear a promise in that? He what? He shall be. Oh. He shall be. It doesn't say you might be one that springs up like a tree. He says you shall be. This is a good promise. It has incentive to it, doesn't it? It's like, whoa, this is taking me somewhere. Actually, knowing God is the incentive, but this is the fruit of knowing God. You see what I'm saying? So there's a big benefit in knowing Him. He shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water. Now look. That brings forth fruit in its season. So you're not going to be barren and you're not going to be uh, unable to produce. You're, you're going to be ready. You're going to have the goods. You're, you're, there's, there's the capacity to love in your heart. To have compassion. Patience is on you because you've become love. There's all the fruit of the Spirit is just all over your life. And you're not trying to apply a sermon to be a faithful Christian. You've become like a son. There's a difference. You get it? You bring forth fruit in your season. Your leaf shall not what? Wither. 
That's amazing. Now, who's going to make that happen? That's called the grace of God. It's not just because you're super Christian. It's because you're communing with the Lord. His grace is on your life. And, and this is the one that's amazing. And whatever He does shall... Sometimes we think that that, that word prosper has kind of been contaminated a little in a sense when we hear it. Whatever He does shall prosper. That means if I sincerely love somebody and sow seed of truth into their life, it's going to manifest, bear fruit and increase. If I'm sincere. There's a place where love's going to have its effect in every aspect of my life. Whatever I do is prospering. Nothing's in vain. Nothing's a waste of time. I can be in a conversation and it could seem like somebody's not getting it again and again and again. And then they call me back. Same topic again and again. I've done this for years. And they'll call me ten times in a week. And it's just the same. And, and I actually have other phone calls. I've got a life to live, even personal with family. And, and I have ministry and travel. And you'd be amazed what I do behind the scenes with that stuff. Because whatever I do will prosper. People aren't throwaways. I have time for that. I just know that if they don't get out of that thinking, they're going nowhere. If I can take whatever time it takes to get something in them, whatever I do will prosper. That's why I have time for people and don't get tired doing it because they're not a wearisome burden to me I'm in faith for my response I'm on the phone because of faith because of love because I have a bigger vision than them calling me ten times in seven days are you following me it's not the natural man I wish they'd cut me a break they're calling me way too much don't they know I got a whole lot of other things to do I don't even have time for this oh my god they're going to wear me out See, that's what we think. And then there's no grace. You, don't, you never rise above your human capacity. Because your natural knowledge binds you to your natural ability. <laughs> Love is amazing. They throng Jesus constantly. He did more things in three years than the world could contain of books if they were written one by one. I think he had a pretty active life. <laughs> <laughs> there was nights he stayed up all night and just communed with God and then ministered all day long the next day. Two have become one. We've accepted oneness with the Lord. That's the reason the Bible says you're going to have boldness in that day. Not because you have a whole chain of works on your belt. Because it says we'll be judged by our works, but where's the works flow from? It's flowing from love, Right? If you're just doing good works to build your own kingdom and secure your own identity in the sight of man, that's not even going to, that's nothing. That's like a filthy rag, right? So, <laughs> I become one with him and I yield myself to him and I don't want the nature of man, I don't want to be sold short and have anybody, even a good Christian, lie to me without realizing they're not telling me the truth. They're not willfully lying. I don't even want them to tell me that, well, we're only human or we can't this. We can't. I don't want to embrace one thing that sells me short of what I can be now that Christ came. That's how adamant I am about that. So I don't let anybody in on that one. That's a place reserved for Jesus and His Spirit. In other words, I don't want one drop of grace available to transform my life to fall to the ground because of natural thinking. You follow me? And I am on a journey to be what he made me to be from the inside out. I am not selling cheap. I have prayed that prayer so many times over the years. Uh, tears pour down my face when you're not looking. And I say, God, thank you for the honor of being possessed by your heart. And I thank you, God, that you are moving in me and cultivating me in such a way that I can manifest you fully. I don't want to limit you. I don't want to keep one thing short of coming through my life that you paid for. Have your way in me. And I just talk to him like that. I could be driving and talking like that. Ugh. And then I'm not full with a bunch of yell yeah, but. You follow me? Yeah, but brother, you don't understand. I get that one a lot. <laughs> Privately, people come, yeah, but I don't know if you understand my life. Well, no, I probably don't, but I understand his. And his life's to become yours. So don't let yours rise above the grace available through his. We do it a lot. Yeah, but you don't understand my family situation. That's what people say. See, that's the stuff that I pray doesn't ever have a hold on me because that's the stuff that sells transformation short in your life. That's the stuff that hinders faith and limits grace. 
We don't understand that spiritual process a lot of times and we're real quick to just write off the, the cuff, just boom, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but, 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 And there's no depth to what we're saying. There's no validity. There's no spiritual truth. It's just natural wisdom. And it'll make sense in some circles or a lot of circles. But it doesn't make sense to heaven. <laughs> you get it? If it doesn't make sense to heaven, I don't want it in my language. You all follow me? Yeah. So, so the Lord knows the way of the righteous, the way of the ungodly perish. So he knows the way of the righteous. So God does know your heart. He knows the motive of your heart. And, but meditating in the word day and night. We're going to talk about it today, maybe a little tomorrow. I want to go to John 17 quick. And I just want to set a little precedence here. Probably teach a little different than I usually do in the sense of I just want you to see a little bit of foundation here of just some scripture that empowers what we're even talking about today. Okay? Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. I love this. Listen to this motive. But glorify your son so the world's impressed with me and I can rock everybody and everybody esteems me and honors me and takes my picture and thinks I'm amazing. No! Glorify your son so your son may glorify you. The reason I won who you are and what you have for me isn't so that I'm blessed and my day is rosy and fuzzy. It's so that men know who you are because of my life. Come on. That's called pure. Or you're going to be driven even in Christ thoughts and Christ prayers to a self-centered motive. It's a self, just me, 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 me. You have to be very careful you don't get trapped in a me, myself, and I mentality in any area of your life, I promise you. You don't want an ounce of feeling sorry for yourself. I'm telling you, we butter each other up on that stuff. We, we empower that stuff. We, we feel it's insensitive to not be so sensitive. But if you're empowering, feeling sorry for yourself, somebody's sorry for, your, for themselves, that's not love. That's, not, that's, that's enablement in a wrong way. It's, there's a place to wrap your arm around somebody and feel for them, but to empower them to continue to feel sorry for themselves, you've got to pull them way off of that. Yeah. That's the end of the road. Feeling sorry for yourself is a zero. It is. It's, it's the biggest lie of all because it says you're not dead and you're not alive unto God. You're alive unto yourself and you need God to keep you going. And It's a big suggestion there when you feel sorry for yourself. Well, the whole, it just feels like the whole world's against me. Oh, honey. No, I try to imply truth there as I feel compassion. I can feel compassion for you, but I am not going to stroke that lie in the process. That's not in the blanket cuddled up with you. That gets out in the cold. You stay in the blanket. I'll keep you cuddled. But we're going to put the lie out in the cold. That's not going to get rocked with the baby. You following me? Well, that's a good analogy. Write that one down. Randy, keep that on tape. I might preach that someday. <laughs> that's just good. Do you see what I'm saying? You've got to separate that stuff. Because that lie is what's empowering the mentality and the disposition and all the fruit attached. Feeling sorry for yourself is the biggest lie on the planet. What do you mean the whole world's against you? If God be for me, who can be against me? The Lord is my helper. Uh, Hebrews 13.5 What shall I fear? What can man do to me? There's a truth there. Come on, they're not Sunday, hallelujah, amen scriptures to get the atmosphere pumped and then all go home and live some other way. The Lord is my helper. What shall I fear? What could man ever do to me now? Because <laughs> my perspective's changed. I'm called to man. Man's not called to me. It's not what man can do for me. It's how I can love. It sets me free. You owe me nothing now. And I know, oh, no man, anything but to love. It's the freedom of my life. So if I start feeling sorry for myself, it means that I'm forgetting why I'm here and I'm picking up the old way. And it's just about me. 